friend, if you do not have the opportunity to read the novel Matteo Falcone by Prosper Mary May, watch this video. This is a story about how the word honor was used in Italy in the 19th century. Mary May wrote the novel in 1829, events taking place on the island of Corsica in the same period. The story is in the first person. So, if you go deep into the island, then after three hours you can go to the thickets of poppies. Poppies are the birthplace of shepherds and criminals. Poppies are a dense vegetation, something in between trees and shrubs. Only if you have an axe can you pass through the poppies. Well, if you killed a man, then you need to run in poppies. There you will live in safety. Of course, if you have a gun, gunpowder and bullets, shepherds will feed you. But justice or the relatives of the murdered person have nothing to fear here. When I visited Corsica, the home of Matteo Falcon was located about a kilometer from these poppies. Matteo was rich, he lived honestly. His main income was herds. And he had a lot of them. Matteo was not yet 50. He was short, but strong. And he also very aptly shot from a gun. Probably the best of all in those parts. And at night, and in the afternoon, always got. People said, I did not check, that he could get into a sheet of paper from 80 meters at night. Behind that leaf they lit a candle, then they extinguished it. And so he shot and fell in the dark. Of course, everyone around knew about such an arrow. He was a generous man and had no enemies. Although it was rumored that before marrying, he killed his rival. Of course a shot from a gun. But that story was hushed up. And Matteo quietly married Giuseppe. His wife bore him three daughters first. Matteo was furious. Well, then came the heir. A man called him Fortunato. Daughters of Matteo successfully married. And the son was then ten years old. He showed great promise. One autumn morning, Matteo and his wife went to the poppies to look at their flocks. Fortunato stayed home, for senior, to guard. He lay in the sun. And then suddenly he heard a shot from a gun. The sound was from the plane. Then more shots were heard, closer and closer. And then a man appeared on the path. He was in rags overgrown, leaned on a gun because he was wounded in the thigh. It was a gangster. At night, he went to the city for gunpowder and was ambushed. Are you the son of Matteo Falcone? He asked. Yes. I'm Gennetto San Piero. Chasing me. Hide me. Fortunato replied that he could not do this without the permission of his father. And he offered to wait for him. There was no time to wait for the poor fellow. Either you hide me, or I'll kill you. Choose. Your gun is unloaded, the boy said calmly. I have a dagger. Then try to catch up with me. And the boy jumped to the side. Damn. The real son of Matteo Falcone will not allow me to be captured at his home. The boy hesitated. What will you give me if I help you? Gennetto gave him a silver coin. Then the boy made a hole in the hay shovel, and the thug hid there. Fortunato laid a cat with kittens on the hay, such as they had been there for a long time, covered traces of blood with earth and lay down again to rest. A few minutes later, there were six soldiers in front of the house. The sergeant was a relative of Falco. His name was Teodoro Gamba, this hangman gangsters. Hi, nephew, did you see anyone here, saw? In the morning a priest drove here, just, not, I was asleep. You're lying. The shots were supposed to wake you up. I'm sure you saw the criminal. And the sergeant ordered to search the house. He understood that the lame thug would not make it to the poppies. And traces of blood ended here. Do you remember who my father is? The boy asked. 
I do not give a shit. I can take you to jail and cut off your head if you can't tell where Janetto is. Fortunato only laughed. The soldiers told the sergeant that he did not quarrel with Matteo. Meanwhile, the search in the house ended. The boy calmly stroked the cat. One soldier jabbed his bayonet into the hay, nothing. Then the sergeant pulled a silver clock out of his pocket. Expensive clock. Fortunato's eyes immediately sparkled. Do you want? asked uncle. The boy wanted. I really wanted. But did not show the mind. Uncle brought the clock to his face. He saw that there was a struggle inside the boy. Finally, the nephew reached out for the clock. Uncle put the clock in his hand, but the chain has not yet been released. The boy pointed at the hay with his thumb, and the sergeant let go of the chain. Taking the clock, Fortunato bounced aside, and the soldiers immediately began to scatter the hay. Bandit tied up. The boy threw him his silver coin. But Janetto did not even look at her. I can't go, he told the sergeant. You have to carry me. While the soldiers were preparing a stretcher and bandaging the wound of the gangster, Matteo and his wife emerged from the poppies. His wife carried a heavy bag of chestnuts, and Matteo carried an easy gun. When he saw the soldiers, he first thought that they had come for him. It seems like he did not remember the guilt for himself, but you never know. He aimed his gun and slowly began to approach the house. The sergeant saw him and thought too, why is Matteo aiming at them? Damn, okay. And the sergeant went to meet Matteo. Hello. Do not shoot. I am your relative. Matteo removed the gun. Teodoro told why they are here. If it were not for your son, I would not have found him. Janetto hid in the hay, and Fortunato revealed his cunning. Matteo said quietly, Damn. He and the sergeant approached Janetto. He spat on the threshold of the house and said that this was the house of the traitor. Matteo did not respond to the insult. He was heartbroken. The boy brought the arrested bowl of milk. But he refused to take it from his hands. And he asked for a drink from a soldier. Soon the sergeant with the guys carried Ganito on a stretcher. It took about ten minutes. Matteo was silent. The son was scared. He cried. Mother saw the clock chain. Where do you get your clock from? She asked. Uncle Sergeant gave. Matteo snatched them and immediately smashed to the ground. He said that Fortunato became the first traitor in the Falcon family. Matteo took the gun and went to the poppies. He told his son to follow him. Giuseppe understood everything. She kissed her son and returned to the house in tears. Matteo and son went into the poppies. Pray, son, said Matteo. The boy asked not to kill him. He cried and read our father, I believe, mother of God. Matteo raised his gun. God forgive you. He said and fired. The boy fell dead. Matteo went to the house for a shovel to bury his son. Towards him ran out Giuseppe. I did justice. He died a Christian. Said Matteo. That's the story, friends.